All stations, this is Kalispell Dispatch with your morning fire weather forecast for Sunday, August 26th, starting with the discussion. Thunderstorms today across central Idaho and southwest Montana. Afternoon thunderstorms fueled by moisture from the southwest monsoon will impact central Idaho and southwest Montana this afternoon and evening. Dry low levels will cause gusty, erratic winds in the vicinity of storms. Wednesday morning, a cold front will move across the northern Rockies. Northwest Montana will likely see some precipitation with this storm, but for the most of the region, it will be a dry, windy, cold front break. Now you're in a building that's got nothing but glass walls, and it's on top of a mountain. It was built on top of that mountain because of the view that mountain has. 14 feet by 14 feet. So figure that out. That's, uh, that's 196 square feet. My firefighting background is primarily uh, the Anchorage Fire Department in Anchorage, Alaska. I was there from 1975 to 2009. And I married a California girl while I was in uh, Alaska. She was pretty plain about if we were going to stay together she wanted to retire to the California desert. And I did with her, and it's a great life, but it's a little hot in the summertime. It can be 115 degrees and humid. So after two summers down there, after retirement, I asked her if she minded if I got a summer job someplace uh, a little bit cooler. And on top of a mountain in northern Montana is about as cool as you can get. packing program it's a lot of tradition with it you know that's how the park was pretty much built with, with horses you know and I think that's great that we that we still get to do it um, probably kind of a dying art maybe you could ask Luke the lookout he's he's probably has the same same idea I mean these mountains are addicting um, once you start playing in them you, you know you don't want to leave them that's kind of the way it is for me. I, you know, started packing and just fell in love with the job. It's a good way to stay in the mountains all summer, do something I love. I took a class online, learned how to ride and pack, and applied for the job and got it. <laughs> no, I've, I've been on horses my whole life. Um, I guess you could say probably before I was born, my, my mom, there's pictures of her on a horse, you know, with her pregnant with me. So. Horses have been a big part of my life, um, and still riding them. Oh, my name's Blue. Um, I'm a Blackfeet there, and I work for Glacier Park. Water is the biggest issue when you live on top of a mountain. Um, we've got a spring about two miles down. It's a lot nicer when, when they can bring it up for me. <laughs> Food, um, propane. I pretty much run my fridge off of propane, my stove, stay warm with propane. And then, you know, whatever I need to maintain the lookout. Being in solitude definitely has its perks. I'm gonna look out for a reason. You gotta think about your place in, in the world and it's a really good place to think. It gives you a lot of a lot of room to think. For some people I think it holds a romantic idea about, you know, shooting your own course in life and you know, there's lots of romanticism with a lookout. You know, it holds you know, finding something, finding, figuring out what you want to do. Uh, 
I've been a lookout for four years, and I've been a lookout once at Prairie Reef Lookout in the Bob Marshall Wilderness, once at Huckleberry, um, here at Glacier National Park, and now two years here at Lone Man. Swift Current's a pretty unique spot, and, I, and not only is it almost centrally located in the park, it's, it is in this rare spot to watch these incredible weather systems. This is just moist, cool, arctic air coming down from Canada and being heavy like it is and stuff, it's going to want to sit close to the ground and it's just coming in on the prairie and then runs smack dab into the Rocky Mountain and then when it does, this is what we get, you know, this is in its way and it finds whichever way it can to, to come in here like this. I railroaded from the time I was 15 until the time I was 46, 30 years I railroaded. And uh, it was time for me to move on. You know, that's long enough in any one profession. Uh, so uh, I knew I had other things in my life to do. And uh, you're witnessing some of them right here. Yeah, just another leg in the journey. Yeah. kind of figure we're two and a half months at the lookouts. Ten day hitch with four days off, you know, um, and then like I said another three weeks to a month of early stuff where we're just going from lookout to lookout getting it prepared and seeing whose roof blew off and who didn't because that's no joke. I mean it may seem, you know, lackadaisical up here, but at 8,500 feet, everything's intense. The wind's intense, the sun's intense, everything's intense, you know. And it wears on you. It wears on you, no doubt. Kalispell Dispatch, Swift Current Lookout on Desert. Good morning, Buck. Good morning. Swift Current this morning. Temperature 33. My RH is 98%. My winds are zero to five out of the north. I have four inches of new snow up here. Uh, it's gonna probably come down to about 0.15 in precip when it melts here. And cloud cover 100%, visibility 50 yards, over. I copy four inches of new snow, cutter being out of the current. Yes, that's my afternoon itinerary, over. Is there really? Yeah, it's knee deep. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, for crying out loud. It's hard to see the trail. Yeah, I bet it was. It's, I think, so many years of railroading that I listened to noisy, noisy locomotives and noisy people. And <laughs> for me, it really is about just not having to listen to the world down there that's so chaotic and crazy and noisy and unkind. Up here there's just, it's just the wind, you know? It's just the wind and you can, uh, 